welcome back to another video. This is Allison, and I'm glad you're joining me today. We have some quick and easy gatefold cards that we're going to make today, and what you're looking at right now is the inspiration card. We made this in a class at the Create event up in Ohio this past weekend. That's the Simon Says Stamp event. And this was a class led by Gina Kay and Jennifer McGuire. And speaking of Create, I won this prize when I was there. And I never win anything, so this was exciting. But I should clarify, I didn't actually win this either. I won a stack of stamps. And the lady who won this, um, I guess she has a similar one at home or maybe even this exact one. So out of the goodness of my heart, I offered to trade. So thank you, Candy, if you're watching. I hope you're enjoying your stamps. So we're going to use that today. All right, we're going to start off with just a half sheet of cardstock. You just cut it the long ways. So you have a panel that's four and a quarter by 11. And we are going to score at two and three quarters on each side. And why are we doing that? Because we want the final card to be A2 sized. So you want it to be five and a half inches wide and five and a half divided by two is two and three quarters. So that is the magical measurement. So today we're making two cards and we're going to do these gatefolds a little bit differently. This first one, we are just going to put the design right on the front of the panel. So I taped it closed to keep the two flaps shut. And now I'm putting it on the stick and stamp mat. And we're going to stencil this. So I'm using pixie spray because the bulk of the panels, there's no way that that stencil would stay without the pixie spray. And you can see it's... You can see the edges of the stencil would not cling to the stick and stamp or the stamp and stick mat, whatever it's called. I always forget the name of this thing, but it's ever so useful. All right, so now we're going to use some Gina K inks and ignore the pink and yellow. We're not using those for this card. Um, I will have a list of all ink colors on my blog and you can find a link to my blog in the description below. So we're using this uh, geometric stencil again from Simon. I've used this several times since it came out earlier in the month and I love, love, love this group of products and I can't get enough out of them. So I'm just doing some very easy stenciling with some blue and green inks and that is actually the color theme for today because those are my favorite colors. Um, I think I've mentioned before, turquoise is my very favorite color. So I apologize if you'll see a lot of it from me, but I just can't get away from it. All right, and that's my little ink cube holder from Simon Says Stamp. Um, it holds many ink cubes like you see, and it's it's really useful. I like it. And here's the big reveal, and Everything is nicely centered. I'm really happy with how that came out. All right. So now we are going to use the die cutting machine for the first time. And I'm gonna use this glossy cardstock from Simon. This is their color blend cardstock. And I think I did a video a few, maybe last month with the pastel pack that they came out with. This is the original pack. And we're using the Good Vibes shadow die. I love this die and I I think it really ties in with the mod kind of retro feel of the stencil. So the die cutting machine cut these this die out beautifully but this was my first time using one of these tiny little die machines and I know it has suction suction at the bottom if anybody has some tips for me to how to get those suction cups to really hold to my glass mat, I would appreciate it. I didn't really put much effort into getting it to stick. Um, but if anybody has tips with these little die cutting machines, uh, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. 
So here we're just gluing the um, the detail letters to the shadow and the shadow I just cut from white cardstock and I, I doubled that up. I have two layers of white cardstock. And that is done. So now we're going to stamp a sentiment on the inside. So I just kind of taped the flaps open. Now I, I started stamping after the Misty came out. So I don't have a lot of experience using acrylic blocks. I always get super nervous, but I did pretty good with this one. Um, it's just easier to use an acrylic block because you have, you know, you have to open the flaps and it's so wide it wouldn't really fit in the Misty. So to create the gatefold, I'm just putting glue on the left half of that sentiment. And so you just glue it to the left flap. What I love about this design that Jennifer made in class is it doesn't have a belly band and it doesn't really need one. And it's, it's landscape instead of portrait. Um, most of the gatefold cards I've made in the past is portrait with belly band. So there you see the final card and we're gonna move on to the next. So for this card, I am using Pink Fresh inks. And that little yellow thing up in the right-hand corner, I, I got myself my first Positively Everything tool, I think that's what it's called, um, from Simon. I got that up while I was in Columbus this past weekend. And it holds ink pads. You can clean your blending brushes. It can do all sorts of things. It can hold your cup of coffee. And we are just doing some simple blending here with a light green and a turquoise ink. And I'm using my favorite tool, my, my waffle flower stencil mat. And here we're going to make the bird. This is the layered warbler die set from Simon. Now all the pieces are white and that's because the die is actually one piece and it cuts all the pieces out in white. So it's just, or it cuts all the pieces out. So to me, it's just easier to cut it once from white cardstock and then color it yourself with inks. But of course you can cut it several times from different colors of cardstock. To me, it's nice to get blending. So why not just just ink it up yourself anyway and then you can blend different colors together. So here I'm pulling a second color of turquoise ink out to make just some of these features a little bit darker. And there goes the wing. So that's four parts to this bird. It's really easy to put this bird together there's four main parts to the bird and then there's the legs and um, there is a beak and some eyes. So you'll see how I deal with those tiny pieces. What One thing I love about this stencil mat is, as you can see, you can just put a small die cut on and it clings to the silicone and it just makes it super easy to blend. You don't have to hold the piece. And by the way, that was the little beak. All right, this is what I do for eyes that I cut out in white cardstock. I just put the eyes on a scrap piece of paper, and then I take a black marker, and I color the eyes. To me, it's not worth cutting them out again in black cardstock. You can just make them black yourself. Now, the trick is once you color them black, try not to lose them. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting to assemble and I'm gonna put tape on the back where the eye is. And that's gonna enable me to um, put one of the eyes in there and it will, it will stick. Now there's two eyes because um, that blue, that bottom blue layer cuts the eye out and then that top green layer also cuts the eye out. That's why there's two eyes. So in a minute, you'll see me stick the, the second eye in there. And I'm just going to glue everything together. There goes the second eye. And I had decided at that point I wanted this little wing to be a little bit darker. So 
just grab my ink again, quickly ink that up. And we're gonna glue the little legs on. And that's really easy. You just put glue on the top of the legs and there goes the little beak and we're done. All right, so now we are going to put some detail onto the panel that we had blended before. And we're using this gorgeous stamp that I also picked up this past weekend, the Leaf Edges Cling Stamp. I've been wanting this. It came out a few months ago, but it immediately went out of stock because it's been so popular. Um, this is a pull apart. So it has two leaf designs and you can stamp them together or you can stamp them separately. And I'm gonna just use this piece and I'm gonna put my panel onto my stick and stamp mat that I put in my Misty. And that's because I wanna stamp kind of off the edge of it. So I need it to stay put. So I'm taking a darker green Pink Fresh ink and I'm just gonna stamp those leaves along the bottom left corner. And that was really easy. My panel was done. All right, so I had mentioned that we were gonna do two different ways of doing this gatefold card. The first card we just stenciled right onto the right onto the card base itself. This time we're gonna cut this panel in half. And again, this was a five and a half inch wide panel, so we're gonna use that magical two and three quarter measurement. We're gonna cut it right at two and three quarters to get two halves. And I'm gonna bring in my card base, which I made the same exact way as before. It's just a four and a half, four and a quarter inch by 11 inch um, panel of paper that I scored at two and three quarters on each side. So this is why it's different. This time I'm just gluing these panels onto the front of the card flaps. So you can do it either way. And in the class that Jennifer taught, we did it this way because we, we kind of did mirror images of some stencil designs. So I love how versatile it is. Here I'm using one of the crimped circles die from the greetery and that's going to help um, create my little centerpiece. I'm not going to call it a belly band because again it, it doesn't have a band going around the card but I'm going to place my bird on the circle and now I'm just trying to figure out where I want a sentiment and I found the perfect little sentiment in this mini messages set from Mama Elephant. It just says love you and I'm just going to stamp that up in black. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm not embossing it or anything. The, like I said, these are just really quick and easy cards today. But for a quick and easy card, I think it's cool to have, you know, a fun fold effect as well. All right, so here we go again with the acrylic block. This time it wasn't as successful, but that's okay because we're not perfect. I don't pretend to people that, you know, these are store made cards. People know I make these and they appreciate them. But if you can see, there's a splotch right next to the top sentiment and you're gonna see how I'm gonna fix it. In that set, and by the way, this, this sentiment is from the Greetings Mix 1 from Simon. In that set, there's little hearts. So I'm just going to stamp a heart right over that splotch. And then I'm going to stamp a heart on the bottom right. And then it kind of just looked like I meant to do that the whole time. The W is still kind of messed up, but that's okay. I, I'm going to not worry about it. So again, I'm gluing up just the left half of the circle, and I'm going to glue it to the left flap. That way we don't glue our card shut. And I got a little bit of glue on the other side. That's okay. I just wiped it off. Now I'm putting thin foam squares onto my bird. 
And I'm going to actually cut a teeny tiny little sliver of foam to put on the back of the beak because nobody likes a saggy beak. And now it's ready to put on there. And I really love this bird. This is the first time I've used this bird dye and I've been wanting to use it. So I'm excited. All right, to finish up the card, I'm just adding some Pink Fresh Jewels. And by the way, I had added some Pink Fresh Jewels to that first card as well. I think I forgot to mention that. And the jewels are kind of light blue and light green, so they go perfectly with the card. And I had my craft pick on the card just to keep the flaps closed while I glued those jewels on there. And that's a card. And I think I mentioned that I made this from a lighter weight base, or maybe I didn't. This is an 80 pound base, so it's, I might, when I send out this card, I might stamp my personal stamped, um, you know, made by Allison on the back on a separate panel and then glue that to the back just to give it a little more heft. But you don't, really don't need to. But I like the way it stays closed a little bit easier with that 80 pound base. So here it is, the finished card. I love this card. I love the bird. Love those leaves. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And really, it was so fast to make. I am really happy that you joined me today. I really appreciate it. And leave me comments. I love getting comments. Um, again, leave me comments on how to get those suction cups to work on that, um, that little uh, die cutting machine. I would really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to my channel. And I wish you all a great day. Bye-bye.